Hello friends, this video on solid states part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Correct. So we have studied about crystalline and amorphous. Let's understand the difference once again in a tablet fashion. So we talk about the crystalline, the examples are my diamond, quartz, sodium chloride, that is NaCl, common salt. We talk about the amorphous, the common examples are plastic, rubber and the glass. The first difference was the crystalline have a regular 3D arrangement of particles due to which they have defined, well-defined geometrical shape. For amorphous, they don't have, they do not have regular arrangement and they do not have well-defined shape actually, this is shape, correct? They have long range order, if you see this, if you just expand this, you'll see the same order for a long distance, maybe thousands and lakhs of molecules. These guys have, the MRFs have short range order. In fact, there's no order in this picture, there's no order. They have very sharp melting point in crystalline. We saw that you heat it at a given temperature X, it melts. They don't have sharp melting points. It, it melts over a period of temperature X degrees Celsius to Y degrees Celsius. It, it melts actually, it, it slowly uh, melts. They have fixed and very high heat of fusion. High, why high? Because they are symmetrical, very strong, so they have high heat of fusion and they have less, these guys have small heat of fusion, but they don't, these guys have fixed heat of fusion, they don't have fixed heat of fusion again. They are anisotropic, why? Because the arrangement is fixed, if you go in this direction, if you go in this direction, it's all different, so they are anisotropic, their physical property is different, right? For the same crystal, if you're observing from this direction or this direction. Since there is no arrangement, you go in any direction, it's almost same, so they are isotropic, their physical property doesn't change. In uh, with respect to the direction, they are true solids. Crystallines are true solids, but they are pseudo solids. In fact, they are super cool liquids. Correct. So, this crystalline show two breaks in cooling curve. We have seen this cooling curve, and this has a smooth cooling curve. This crystalline is more stable, more sturdy, amorphous is less stable. And when you cut with a sharp tool, this is something we didn't discuss, I think. When you cut, cut with a sharp tool, this crystalline is split into two pieces. And this newly generated surface will also have plain and smooth surface. Correct? But with this, amorphous, when you cut, you have this knife, actually, let's say this is knife. And with this knife, if you cut this uh, amorphous solid, they will cut into two piece but the surface will be irregular surface please note here will be plain and plain and smooth surface right here you will get irregular surface see crystalline and amorphous are the extreme case we discussed right but naturally we have seen that all the substances are not pure crystal or pure amorphous we have something called polycrystalline which is something in between crystalline and amorphous Correct. So, these are solids which composed of crystallites of varying size and orientation, but they are separated by fine grain boundaries. So, if you see, they are nothing but L right here solids composed of many crystallites of varying size and orientation separated by grain boundaries so you see this is one pattern here there is one pattern here this is one pattern here right so there are different boundaries here therefore they are many crystallites like that but they are separated by boundaries correct so if you see almost all common metals all common metals if you see all metals all common metals they fall in this category and some, and some polymers also fall in this category for example sulfur sulfur occurs as polycrystals 
it also occurs as single crystal it also occurs as amorphous so sulfur exists in all three forms correct and the degree of crystallinity as we told has a huge influence on hardness density transparency etc so there are so many things actually no i mean what i'm trying to say is i think it's pure it's, we have something called polycrystalline also and this crystallinity is something which you can uh, measure using x-ray diffraction calorimetric those kind of techniques right so single crystals are rare single crystals are like gems or silicons or diamonds quartz they are single crystals but generally metals you see they are poly crystalline if you see metals like iron copper gold they are all actually polycrystalline correct if you talk about crystal then you have sodium chloride zinc sulfate all these things what i'm trying to say is we have something called polycrystal which is also there but we'll not discuss much about polycrystalline whatever is polycrystalline for this chapter at least we'll assume they are crystalline itself in this chapter we'll assume iron copper gold are crystals why do you use you this term is because in the previous slide we just we told that um, something which melts right are crystals but if you see these they also melts <coughs> sorry i told uh, amorphous but they also melt so they they share some properties of uh, crystal and amorphous also but for us now let's talk about some of the examples of these uh, solid states and the crystalline polycrystalline and amorphous and the uses of these solid states we talk about uh, the metals like iron copper and gold they are polycrystalline so these are my polycrystalline right my iron copper and gold correct so we talk about sulfur and silicon the sulfur exists in all three forms actually so we'll talk about that and if you talk about these uh, sodium chloride this is my sodium chloride or if you talk about this is an naphthalene and this is my zinc sulfide zinc sulfide these are my again uh, crystallines sodium crystal and uh, cl you know is common salt naphthalene is used uh, for aroma in um, bathrooms in uh, cupboards zinc sulfide is used for cathode ray in cathode ray tube zinc sulfide you see they have crystal structures we'll talk about these structure in details in the few slides and the sulfur exists in all three forms if you talk about silicon it also exists in all three forms and uh, amorphous silicon this is used for photovoltaic cell and if you talk about uh, a crystalline silicon it is used in semiconductor so we will talk about these uh, crystalline uh, silicon also in details and if you talk about these uh, plastic rubber and glass they are my amorphous yeah these are examples of my amorphous solids this is uh, my crystalline silicon actually it's also used in semiconductor yeah. thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again